Welcome back to the channel where we showcase alternatives. And as a lot of you would be well aware at this point, we're looking at a bunch of different lightweight Linux distributions. There's a lot of reasons for lightweight Linux distributions that I have unpacked in previous episodes. Check the link in the description for the playlist and I'll see if I could chuck a card up in the appropriate corner. But we are looking at a mother of lightweight Linux distributions in that this distro prioritizes lightweightness above everything else. Take Debian, add in a ICE window manager, a few other bits and pieces, some really fantastic but simple system management tools and you get a delightful little distribution called Antix, Anti-X. I'm gonna to refer to it as Antix, I might be wrong with how I'm pronouncing it, but this distro shares an awful lot of ground with another really popular desktop Linux distro and that is MX Linux. Uh, MX Linux takes a lot of the things that Antix does really well and the Mepis community from Simply Mepis and Mepis before that way back in the day, uh, they have combined some of that and kind of beefed it up a little bit to create a workstation desktop class distro while Antix continues to be a very lean, mean fighting distro. So that's what we're looking at today. And this was special thanks to you, the subscriber. If you're not one, then sort that out. But the uh, subscribers on this channel, we did a poll, I did a poll on Twitter and Antics uh, by far and away has come up the most in the comment section below. So I'm excited to check it out. I have been poking around with it. Definitely not the sort of distro that I would run on my hardware every, every day of the week. But this is the kind of thing that you could run on a potato. I exaggerate a little bit, but you get where I'm going. All right, so here we are on the desktop. And yes, minimalism is a word you could use to describe it. The ICE window manager, I have used it, but not in like a really long time. So forgive me if my terminology is a little bit out. It's been a really long time since I used a distro that is this lean and mean. So you guys weren't kidding around when you were suggesting Antics as a fantastic lightweight distribution. So the name of the game here, and especially comparing it to its middleweight bigger brother, uh, MX Linux, which has of course taken on a wild success in and of itself, is that Antics manages to bundle a fairly full set of applications in its full ISO. They offer a core and a net ISO as well if you want to get even more minimalist. But even in their full ISO, which weighs in at like 1.3 gig, they include a lot of software to cover all the different software categories that you would expect. But the kicker is, is that most of the time they opt for very lightweight software. Now there's a few use cases for this. First of all, obviously old hardware. And by old hardware, this includes 32 bit hardware. This includes anything that runs with, uh, I think a minimum of 256 meg of RAM. You can see out of the box here, I've been fiddling around with this session for some time. I'm using 129 megs of an available one gig. I've set this up in a virtual machine, given it two cores and a gig of RAM. And that's being fairly generous for old old school hardware. Um, but the other use case, which has also been uh, related to me in several ways, is, uh, is as a live USB, because one of the specialties of both MX Linux and Antix are the collection of uh, tools that they have to manage different parts of the Linux system and your hardware in general. If you need to restore your bootloader, if you need to uh, CH root into a, an existing system and try and fix it, whatever it might be, there is, chances are there is a tool that is included in Antix that allows you to restore, recover, and get back to where you were. If you really like the way that you've set up your system, you've done some customizations and you wanna roll it into your own ISO that you can deploy on other hardware or just have as a backup, then they have tools to cover that as well. Basically, if you need a tool to be able to recover or manage your system, uh, it comes default in Antix, which means that if you just left this on a USB stick, it is fast enough and low enough on the disk demand that it runs beautifully on a live USB. But if you do actually wanna install it on your system, obviously the installer is there to help you out with that. That's what I've done here. And the installer went off without a hitch and it's remarkably straightforward. There wasn't actually, as long as you don't have any complicated provisioning or a complicated partitioning that you have to do, uh, the installer is, more than capable. It's not particularly pretty, as I would probably say for most of the desktop, but it gets the job done. Now, if we open up a big 
application like uh, LibreOffice, for example, you're going to notice immediately some of the uh, Windows XP-ish uh, window borders uh, courtesy of the ICE window manager. Now, what this does gain us in, uh, in speed and overall resource efficiency, we do lose in terms of appearance. You can customize the GTK theme that is present here on the desktop. So when you come into the Antics Control Center, which I believe is a custom collection of settings and configurations as well, uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, you come in here and you can recognize this little customized look and feel from any lightweight distribution based on uh, GDK. And you can change what kind of widget set theme you would like, icons, cursors, fonts, etc. But back to system usage really quickly, even with the ESR version of Firefox, which comes pre-installed uh, up and running, you can see that that Firefox launch really jumps the RAM usage up, uh, almost doubles it, in fact, up to that 500 meg mark. But even that is well below uh, what most most distros default to uh, here in 2022. All right, let's talk about the Antics Control Center because this is where a lot of the magic happens in terms of uh, a bunch of great tools and configurations condensed into one spot. Uh, we have tabs running down the left-hand side here and basically all it does is it gives you control over both system level stuff and user level stuff. Uh, and I, as you would know, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, I'm a big fan of any time a control center can condense all the settings into one spot. It's maddening to have settings split across different areas of the system. Now, there are a few oddballs when it comes to, uh, you don't get any search functionality, so you are gonna have to keep plunking away through these until you find what you're looking for. For example, setting the screen resolution, it lives under session and not under hardware. So some of these settings take a little bit of getting used to, and there is a little bit of double up here when it comes to uh, surfacing some of these custom uh, antics tools to do things like repair your boot manager or back up the system, take a snapshot of the ISO and create an ISO off that, etc. Now, the interesting thing is that the ICE window manager does seem to have some of the settings uh, tucked into the menu itself. So for example, if you want to customize the, the window header bars or the window title bars, you can come up here and use some of these. You can use some of these categories here to change what uh, theme you want to have your window. So for example, if I go Antics Blue Large, then it's going to change everything and give it a slightly different look and feel based on uh, what kind of style I would prefer. For the purposes of this video, I did increase the font scaling just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to be able to see what's going on. But I can't stress enough just how lightweight and snappy not only the OS is, but most of the applications that come with it. With the exception of Firefox and LibreOffice, which are kind of necessary evils if you want to run a contemporary system, uh, when it comes to the, the natively installed apps, uh, yeah, these are all pretty lightweight little tools that are mostly designed to do one thing and one thing only, but we get some pretty good coverage here. Everything from webcam viewers to media players. You do have to know what you're doing though, and you do have to know what the name of these packages are and what those apps do in order to feel comfortable and at home here on the system. There is help documentation uh, present here on the desktop that you can uh, avail yourself with. But there is no doubt about it, this distro does require a little bit of Linux experience if you want to feel comfortable in it. It is worth mentioning that the right-click game in the ICE window manager uh, is strong as it is with a lot of minimalist window managers. So when it comes to getting around the desktop quickly and even in the file manager, you're best served by just right clicking uh, because that usually gets you where you want to go the fastest. So how easy is it to install additional software? Well, as many MX Linux users would know, uh, the package installer that comes with Antics and MX, and obviously MX Linux has a slightly more beefed up version of this that can also handle things like Snap and Flatpak. Uh, that is definitely not enabled here by default at all. In fact, this distribution for whatever reason uh, has a very old kernel and a very traditional approach to most things due to the fact that they're aiming at a minimalist lean and mean build. But they do have a bit of a curated list here of popular packages that people would wanna be able to install including a good selection of uh, web browsers to choose from, desktop environments, and all of these other categories. Now, if you do want more robust package management through a graphical tool, 
then they also do include the Synaptic Package Manager. So obviously if you're familiar, if you're familiar with Debian or Ubuntu based distros, then you can definitely make yourself feel at home here. Finally, the one last little bit that I wanted to mention in Antics is the fact that they've actually been able to use a fair few terminal based apps to keep the footprint low. What I mean by that is that to keep the overall install size low and also to keep system resource usage during a session low, you're gonna notice that a few of the smaller apps, things like a calendar, for example, are in NCURSE's format. So they're not full graphical applications, they're sort of running in a windowed terminal view uh, in an end cursor, which I just kind of think is cool. Yes, it definitely limits your usability and user friendliness and all that kind of stuff. But for the kind of user that this distro is aimed at, if you prioritize lightweight above everything else, system performance at its finest, then uh, this is going to be where you're looking. Now the trade-offs here that you're going to make compared to a desktop like MX Linux is some key things. Hardware enablement, for example. The, the kernel that we are dealing with here out of the box is ancient. Now, of course, you can manage that yourself, like I mentioned in my Linux Mint Debian edition review, but by default on a fresh install, we are dealing with the kernel 4.9. Uh, now, this is a custom Antix kernel as opposed to one that's packaged uh, just generically for Debian. So I would imagine there are some pretty uh, hefty tweaks going on here, but the rest of the package base is pretty expected for Debian 11. So closing thoughts. This is a fantastic get out of jail free card or make a use of a really old piece of hardware. Is it something that could hack what most people expect from a desktop computer in 2022? I doubt it, but, but the flexibility that a project like this offers can be very compelling to the right kind of user. Keep the suggestions coming. We definitely have plenty more to look at. We'll see you in the next one.